A few days have passed now, and Greg Numidor and his partner have returned from Michigan to finish chinking the interior logs. They're using the same techniques as they did on the exterior logs last fall. First, they fill the gaps between the logs with strips of backer rod. Then they squeeze the flexible chinking material over the backer and smooth it out with trowels. It'll take them a couple more days to do all the logs, so we'll check back when they're farther along. Well, we moved ahead here on our terracotta floor. These are thick, hand-milled tiles from Italy. And they're heavy clay and not exactly recommended as a do-it-yourself project from the manufacturer. So we had our tile setter, Joe Kerber, handle this job. He spread a thick layer of thin-set mortar, combing in three-quarter inch ridges. And he set the 12 by 12 squares with a 3 8 inch grout space. And he beat them into the mortar with a mallet. Now the surfaces are irregular, so the trick is to keep everything level. On the walls, we set ceramic tiles. And this job was a little more straightforward, so we handled it ourselves. The tiles are hand-painted in Spain, and they feature the design of fruits and vegetables that you might find in a typical country garden. The full tiles are framed by smaller border tiles. Organic mastic is used to secure them to the plywood under the cabinets. And we lay them out with enough room below for the countertops and the backsplash. I'll go finish in the entryway. Okay. Now for our wall tiles, we're using white grout. But for the terracotta here, we're using a natural gray. We're just working the grout into all the spaces and then sponging off the excess. In the entryway, we also have terracotta squares on the floor. They're unglazed tiles which can absorb moisture. So we've mixed the grout fairly dry and applied sealer to protect them from the grout and from stains. After grouting, we covered the floor to protect it as the countertops go in. Now, we ordered granite, and we've gotten some help with the installation from Larry Eisenschenk, Dean Doyne, and Jeff Villers. Now, this is a traditional black granite flecked with green and polished to a glossy finish. It was fabricated in Cold Spring, Minnesota, using cardboard templates we scribed here. To secure it, they first spread glue over the base cabinets. Then they set the sheet in place. We had to remove the taller end cabinet here to get the granite in. It's heavy, but it's strong and stain resistant, which minimizes upkeep. It's tough to get an exact fit, so some maneuvering is needed. The granite backsplash is set over the top and glued to the plywood, fitting right under the tile. Then the cabinet can go back in. Now this will take several hours, so we'll do some other work for a while. Well, we've moved along on the pine flooring here. We're now working in the master bedroom area. We should be finishing this up fairly soon, but we won't actually be working on the last step for some time, and that's the sanding and the ceiling. By mid-afternoon, the chinkers had finished the fireplace area and began moving along the great room walls. Now, they're covering the wiring as they chink the gaps, and they're boosting the R value between the logs by adding backer and the chinking. And in the kitchen, they finished the granite countertops along two walls and started on the island. There's an opening cut in the first piece for the island sink. The second piece rests on a set of legs, extending the top of the island for a small eating area. All right, we're done with this part of the floor, so we can cross that off our list. And the countertops are done, so we can finish up in the kitchen. Our next step there is hooking up the sinks. We set a double stainless steel sink into the opening under the windows. We've equipped this one with a combination single control faucet to pull out sprayer. The island bar sink is black enamel cast iron with a high art polished chrome faucet and antique style handles. great room yesterday. This morning, they've begun working their way through the dining room. Well, 
with a little bit of help, we got our range position in the spot we left here in the cabinets. We decided to go with a low maintenance stainless steel finish. This is actually a commercial range adapted for residential use that literally could last generations. This is a great stove for a gourmet chef. In fact, we'll have more time to do that kind of cooking here at the cabin than we would at home. side of the building and it will help supplement our heat on really cold winter mornings plus it's just part of the cabin experience one of the finishing touches here in the kitchen is to put the hardware on the cabinets now our poles have the same finish as the cabinets and they're made out of wood which kind of goes with our country kitchen feeling As we wrap things up in the kitchen, the chinkers finished off their work too. It took them about four days total to finish the interior log, a day longer than the exterior. <laughs> this is all you have left for that, yeah, huh? Yeah. Okay. Well, you did a great job again. No, we really appreciate it. Yeah. Well, take care. Yep. Enjoy your house. Yep. Drive we'll carefully. You.